go in hot, 50 meters east. Uh, they're within hand grenade range. Still stand by, we're firing. This is video from Apache helicopters during the battle. Hundreds of Taliban fighters so close to the U.S. soldiers, the two sides were just meters apart. Ten meters. So that's got to be kidding By the time the Apaches arrived, 75% of the soldiers in Chosen Company, 2nd Platoon, were dead or injured. This is miserable. This is the last 12 days of the morning. This is video those soldiers took just days before the battle. Doesn't this look like fun? <laughs> Go Army. The 49 soldiers digging in by hand trying to establish a new combat outpost in a village called Wanat. The Afghan contractor responsible for bringing heavy equipment had not shown up. You see these people up here? They want to shoot at us. They're going to go up into those things up there called mountains and shoot weapons at us. Village elders had warned Chosen Company the Taliban was planning an attack. And that is exactly what happened. Here he is, Lieutenant Brostrom. Jonathan Brostrom was the unit's platoon leader. And on his last trip home, a surprise visit for Mother's Day, he told his father about one last mission in Afghanistan, a mission he was worried about. They were moving out of a place called Bella, uh, Cop Bella. That's where he was spending most of his time. And they were going to move down to a location which he didn't disclose. That location was just down the valley at Wanat. He was worried about it. You know, he said, Dad, they're going to follow me. This is a bad situation. They're going to follow me, meaning? Well, the insurgents would, would follow him. Um, and I said, son, don't worry about it. You know, you're in the Army. You'll be okay. Videos Jonathan brought home with him, though, showed everything in that valley was not okay. And he was, he was getting attacked, uh, well, I would say, you know, once or twice a week or maybe more. Uh, you know, when a father looks at it, it looks like he's being shot at every day. So I asked him a whole bunch of things. You know, how far away is your battalion headquarters, your company? How often do your commanders come around and see you? Uh, do you get much of Apache support or artillery support? Questions I would imagine... You're asking not as a dad, but a colonel. Well, it was my experience coming out, but I was also concerned about his situation. You see, Dave Brostrom is not just the father of a soldier. For 30 years, he was a soldier. And it turns out the retired colonel had good reason to worry. Basically, the Army sent these guys up there and said, do the best you can. Uh, they did. Um, they underestimated the enemy. I, I guess they, they hoped that everything would go right. Everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. Uh, we're on the west-hand side. We're going to look for the green smoke, and we're going to put some 30 down. You know, we got the notification, uh, you know, on the 13th of July that he'd been killed that same day. You know, it just kind of, it all came together. I said, uh, you know, I wonder if he was doing this mission he was talking about. And he was. Finally, I'm going to be able to answer some of the questions that you've had for over a year. The battle at Wanat was such a disaster it sparked an investigation. Two years later, a Marine general would share the results of that investigation with nine grieving families. One of the families recorded that meeting. We felt that there was dereliction on certain elements of the chain of command as a result of their inaction prior to the battle. Marine Lieutenant General Richard Natonsky found three officers had been negligently distracted. The company commander, the battalion commander, and the brigade commander had not adequately planned the operation. The soldiers had no heavy construction supplies to build a base at Wanat, no potable water in 100 degree temperatures, and most damning, no officer visited Wanat until the day before the attack. The findings, approved by then CENTCOM Commanding General David Petraeus, should have ended the careers of the three commanders 
who David Brostrom blamed for his son's death. But the Army had something else in mind. But I'll just tell you, the perception right now is that you were told to soften this to the United States Army. And that's exactly what happened. We felt that there was dereliction on certain elements of the chain of command. A three-star Marine Lieutenant General had just explained to the families of nine dead soldiers that the officers responsible for the troops at Wanat did not do their jobs. Mistakes were made leading up to the battle, he said, in this video recorded by one of the families. But no sooner had General Natonsky finished that a second general stood up, U.S. Army General Charles Campbell, who delivered a bombshell. And I informed uh, the Secretary of the Army of the action that I took and my determination that the officers listed in the report had exercised due care in the performance of their duties. It was a complete reversal from the findings of Marine General Natonsky, findings approved by Army General David Petraeus. The letters of reprimand to the three commanders were rescinded. No one would be punished. Petraeus was asked about the reversal at a Senate hearing and made clear he still believes the three commanding officers were derelict of duty, disagreeing with General Campbell, the colleague who reversed his decision. We discussed that. Um, I, I respect his view in this particular case. I support the process, uh, but I did not change the finding uh, that I affirmed after the investigating officers provided it uh, to me. But again, I support uh, this particular process. But for Dave Brostrom, an especially stinging moment was yet to come. The Army's Combat Studies Institute was writing the final historical report on the Battle of Wanat and re-interviewing only those officers in the higher command, the same officers that had been originally found derelict of duty. Then the Army's Combat Studies Institute released what is now official Army history. My personal feeling, this is my feeling, is that the Army, when they took a look of, at uh, General Petraeus and General Natonsky's independent investigation, uh, it was embarrassing to them. The final decision was more to protect the institution than it was uh, focused on, you know, finding officers or chain of command derelict in their duties. And put a lot of the blame on your son. Yes, they did. In what is now official Army history, the Army largely blamed platoon leader Lieutenant Jonathan Brostrom for the deaths. The report says he picked a poor location for the observation post and failed to use Afghan security forces as lookouts. It's a lot easier to blame a dead second lieutenant uh, uh, than it is uh, the chain of command.